Good afternoon, good uh, evening, good day for everybody. Uh, today we are having the second session of the webinar, The Future Design of Streets. And today we have a guest as Julia, Mario and Sylvia. Uh, please uh, take on uh, your video. Uh, the Future the Design of Streets webinar series. Um, we have a third edition, so we are really glad to have uh, Barcelona, uh, Lisbon and uh, Milano with us to share their experience, their knowledge and share it with you. Uh, people from everybody, uh, everywhere in Europe, but also outside Europe, from architecture, urban planning, urbanism, landscape architecture, mobility planning, engineering, and a lot of other disciplines. And that's all about livable streets today. That's what we are doing this. We are organizers about three uh, universities in Portugal. The University of uh, Porto, uh, the Faculty of Architecture, uh, um, the University of Minho, Scuola de Architectura, Art and Design. And uh, we are also from the Portugalense University, uh, Architecture and Urbanism. Why are we doing this? Because streets does, does, does matter. The street is our public space of all of us. And therefore it's important to think and rethink this every time again, especially at this moment that we have such a really challenging on a social point of view, but also on sustainable and green challenges along us. We can do this better and we should do this better. Streets form at the end 80, 90% of our public space. It's our common space, our a collective space. And therefore, it's also important not only to make big and nice plazas or parks, but also take care about the small common space where you can meet your neighbor, where you do your first steps as a child, but you have also all kinds of a, a possibility. What's called today the 50 minute city or other kind of concepts that is about proximity and things. How can we do that? Well, perhaps there is no one model to do it, but 1,000 kind of models. And that's why it's important to ask to other people that have more intelligence, more experience in this, and to share it with us. We do this with a short uh, format of presentations. And uh, then later on, we have an open discussion talk with you, uh, um, Julia, uh, Sylvia, and Matt. Our speakers today, as we said, Sylvia, and I'm going to tell just a shortly introduction uh, in the order of uh, speakers. Uh, Sylvia Casarona uh, Martos, uh, she's from Barcelona, uh, sustainable mobility planning and management during 15 years, but also already five years at the municipality uh, of Barcelona, first at the metropolitan area and now at um, uh, as a deputy chief architect office, Barcelona City Council. Also important, she has experience because she, she lives in a super block, uh, now, uh, and that's also a really important thing. Julia, Julia Cicignano, I hope I pronounced that <laughs> correctly. Uh, architecture urban plan, uh, design at the Politecnica of Milano and has uh, and, and beautiful experience in uh, Milano, also during the COVID uh, uh, period at AMAT, at the municipality of Milano, that is the agency of mobility, public space, climate, urban development, etc. Works as well uh, 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 linked with Officina Urbana and uh, recent also have uh, some experience in Rotterdam at Stibo, uh, an uh, office that uh, we are familiar with. Mario Elvis, last but not least, from Lisbon. Uh, civil engineering transport, a really broad experience on this thematic. And uh, perhaps just want some highlights. It's about, let's say, the conference of Walk 21, but also his uh, role as Secretary General of the International Federation of Pedestrians. That is also uh, always on the top of the list when we talk about livable streets. So far, main introductions, and we are going to start directly with the first presentation. Sylvia, may I ask you to start your presentation? Yeah, sure. I'm the one from Barcelona, though 
This is from Lisbon. <laughs> um, yeah, well, thank you, Daniel. Thank you to the Future Design of Streets for this invitation. Um, as you know, in Barcelona, as in many other cities in the world, we are right now trans trying to transform the, our public space. Especially in Barcelona, we don't have uh, big parks. We are a city of, of streets. And then the, the space that's what, that was taken during last century by cars, we need to take it back for people. And that's, yeah, we are implementing many measures, measures but today I'm going to talk about one called um, Let's Protect Schools or School Streets. That it's something we, yeah, we try to change. We, we are trying to create a safe uh, square or safe place, uh, health and healthy also in, in front of each school in Barcelona. That's a big challenge. But uh, everyone agrees that our kids must be protected. So we think it's a very um, useful policy to really change the whole city. So well, I will try to share a screen. And here it is. Yeah. Well, two years ago, we had um, a boy of five-year-old called um, Hugo. He was killed just in front of uh, his school. Um, by a motorbike, well, it was a, yeah, a very yeah, yeah, sad uh, accident. And our mayor, uh, I mean, there was this project already going on, no? but not, not with this power or not with this uh, yeah, commitment. But then our mayor uh, was really convinced that we, in Barcelona, we, we couldn't accept the situation anymore. So then this program really started uh, with a very um, ambitious uh, objective that is, um, changing you know, the environment of uh, all the uh, almost 600 uh, schools, high schools and nurseries that we've got in, in the city. And we are now working with the first 200, which is not, uh, uh, which is quite uh, a lot of places. Um, yeah, I will try to show you uh, what we are doing with. Um, yeah, of course we know no? the schools are the places where our kids uh, spend most, most part of the day. Um, so yeah, our goal for this period, not for the 1923, which is the political period that we are right now in Barcelona, is that at least one of every three schools of the city uh, have a traffic calm area. We are, uh, the interventions are all um, mainly tactical interventions, low cost interventions. We are spending an average of 70,000 euros per school. So the, the budget is, is quite low, but for each school, but uh, as, as, as I mentioned, uh, we really want to, to reach uh, all the schools in the city. So in the end, it's, the budget is now near nine, uh, 10 million euros that we're spending right now. And as you can see the, as, at these images, we are just taking a space from the, that was given to cars to park or to, or to drive. And, yeah, and then we try to give it back to, to people. Uh, what we are trying to, to face is uh, yeah, to improve in the environmental quality, of course, uh, both uh, air pollution and noise. Also, the comfortability of public space. Of course, it's about road safety and it's about also visibility because, as our mayor said, um, everyone, when we enter in a city, we know where a parking place is located because we, we see the P with the, with the blue sign. But we don't know where the schools are located, no. So we need to to make it more more visible. And of course, we are doing all these changes uh, with the with the with the co-creation and the, the involvement of the education and neighbor um, communities. Okay, as I mentioned, we are already working with different programs not to, to protect the schools in in general. Um, before this period, we we had make uh, interventions now in 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 all these schools. But now our challenge is much bigger because, as, as I told you, um, we are not trying to, to focus at all, all these almost 600 uh, schools, uh, yeah, nursery and, and secondary schools. Um, so this is really um, focusing at the whole city because we, we see that all, the, all these education centers are spread in all the territory. Uh, we've got almost... Uh, 200,000 students of all this from zero to, to 18 year old. So yeah, we're trying to, to, to improve all these conditions. We are focusing of course, first at the primary schools, the nursery and the primary schools, and also the schools that the local police is tell, are telling us that um, we've got more problems. Um, also we, in Barcelona, we've got 10 districts, uh, administrative districts. Uh, and of course we also work with them 
because they are more connected to the territory. And also we look at environmental uh, issues, though we know uh, with noise, the impact is higher, but with, with, uh, with air pollution, uh, it's something we need to tackle uh, from the city, not, not, not by spots, because it's not some, something we are solving just by removing um, a few cars. So we started with 26 schools in 2020. Last year we went with 60 or oh, 76. And now the program is now we, we are working with the next ones with 80, 85 schools. Um, yeah, well, until now we 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 want 18,000 uh, square meters from the from the asphalt, not from cars. We give it, we give them back to, to people. Um, we are also putting, of course, uh, bike uh, bike parkings, um, and we try to do some greenery. Though it's difficult, you now with tactical urbanism and greening, it's always a big challenge. Also, you know, to to maintain, you not know, to 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 keep the the green um, properly. Okay, um, and here you can see some images of the previous situation, not to the left, and the and the current situation to the right, uh, of the different interventions that we are um, facing. This one is our favorite ones are the the the, the school streets, no? When when we can really use all, all the space to 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 people for for people, as you can see, the interventions are quite uh, basic in terms of uh, furniture and paint. I mean, it's basically as as I've mentioned, um, tactical elements and flexible and removable elements. So in case there was some need, uh, they, they can be changed, but. Uh, we hope that this will stay for ages and ages. Here it's another uh, school street, no, that we really remove all the cars in the in the streets. But in most of cases, we we need to to share the space because yeah, the the cars must go through even though they 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 have to drive uh, very slowly. So we also combine with this. Also, of course, firemen and ambulances they they must go always through uh, in in case uh, it's necessary. And um, yeah, here's some more images of this sharing space. Um, here is uh, a school in my in my area in my district. This is the previous situation, also on the on the current situation. And here it was funny because the somehow because the families they really wanted this fence to go farther, you not know, to 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 really take the the whole street. But we were convinced that it wasn't the the way to do it because then you create you no know, a very safe place and a very unsafe place. And what we wanted to create, it was the this. I will show you later some more pictures of this. It was this um, shared space, now where the cars mm, really don't know. Um, yeah, they are supposed to to drive maximum ten kilometers per hour, but it's always difficult to drive ten. Um, but when they enter this 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 space, they 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 really drive uh, slowly. Okay, and here also we were uh, removing some 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 parking lanes. Okay. And here also you know, some some parking lanes and so on. Sometimes when we can remove a car a parking lane, uh, but and also a driving lane, then it's more interesting. But sometimes it's not possible because our mobility team says no, no, we need the capacity. Um, we started also with some tactical interventions that finally uh, some of them have become uh, structural interventions. No, in, in this in this in this case, we just made the the sidewalk uh, wider, uh, also in, 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 in these cases. And, and here, uh, I don't see because I'm with, well, here to the right, you see the intervention as well. And here, just a very simple uh, space, but here for wheelchairs, for instance, it's very important to have this space because else the sidewalk is not wide enough. So you see the, the diverse of the, the interventions here. We just remove the, the parking, the, the motor parking no, in, in this corner, and we, we gave it to the to the school just as a staying area for a resting area. Also here, the, the corners in Barcelona, they are usually given to, to cars. And in this case, um, yeah, we put them back to the people. Uh, here are some safety also measures. Not some, of course. If we need a street light, uh, a traffic light, then we we do it. And then here the, the image of the of the visualization no, of the of the school area in, in Barcelona. The plan is that all the schools have this um, signal no, around. And this is in a in a, in a high school. Uh, also, no, the um, the students, um, the young people in Barcelona and many cities of the world, no, it's, it's difficult for them to, to find a place where they 
where they feel welcome, no? Because they are like in at the parks, it's like it's more for kids, no? For your for young, and then well for for children. And here they they can also find no? some some spots just to sit and chat, and so on. And what we like from these interventions is is that yeah, also with the new bike bike parks. Um, this is the the one that I mentioned that we are uh, the, the cars can go through. Uh, the families were asking for a fence, but we didn't want it. And now it's really working properly because they 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 drive. You see here, children are playing, but and the car is driving, but very carefully because they understand that they it's not their their own place. No, also because we put the paint in all the, the all the asphalt, not only um, where the where the children are playing. And in this, these places are not only for kids and the families, but for all the neighbors. No, that's that's a really nice thing also. No? That during the the school time, uh, families and kids are using it, but also after the the school time and in the weekend, just the neighbors no, can can use the, the public space. And yeah, just to finish, Danny, because I think it's I'm already quite quite long. Um, well, here, how how do we work this? There's a, an impulse group, and we do it uh, together, you know, with all the, the the team in the municipality and the district. And then we, we create a table of school environments in each district with all the schools that are in the in the program, and then we yeah we offer you no know, the the kind of the type of solutions that we've got and then then we choose, and then we also have got a monitoring group um, to to control you know, how how the evolution of the of the program is, is working, well the kind of uh, activities you've you've seen already um, that's very important also you know, the traffic calming. We maximum we we limit to thirty kilometers per hour when the street is uh, main street, but in the rest maximum uh, ten or twenty kilometers per hour. So we really try to to lower the, the the speed. And what else? Um, yeah, we don't have a specific uh, regulation, though we yeah we are convinced that we we must do this in in the whole city. And then, so we we just work as a as a project as a project as an executive executive uh, project, and then the, the protocol it's, it's the same as for any bike lane or for any intervention not to in the in the city. And then evaluation. Well, here's some data, but just to tell you, um, we are monitoring you know, the the environmental impact, but also the use of the public space, you no? Know, because um, also how yeah, how this is affecting to the. The social use and the, um, the emotional um, situation of the families and, and kids. And um, yeah, we had some surveys with the families to to check what was working or what what was what should be improved. And now we are improving all the elements. No, for instance, when the when the sidewalk, when they widen widening the sidewalk is not wide enough, it's not useful. No, for for them. So it's also when it's less less than three meters, uh, maybe we shouldn't do this intervention. No, it's like creating um, high quality public space is not only about removing a, a car parking lane of two meters wide, but we, we, yeah, we need more, more space, no? So here there's the detection of what's working and what's not really working. So we are uh, trying to, to improve the project while we do it, no? Um, and here are some more pictures of our interventions of the different elements. Uh, what I told you, no, when the, when the space we are widening is not <laughs> Uh, sufficient. It's not. It's a place that is not useful. No, for for instance, for for wheelchairs here, they they cannot use it. So it's, and it's not creating a, a nice place to to stay. So we are not. We are trying not to do this um, anymore in the, with the project. And that's it, I think, because it's just some pictures of what we like and what we don't like, <laughs> Daniel. So we are, we already know uh, what's working and what should be improved, and we are now working with this. Also, the the the, the patterns the, the families can choose and the kids the, they can choose the, the patterns. And um, and well, that's it. We are working together also with uh, design schools in Barcelona with Elisa Baniak with different pilots. Uh, to create this for this playing uh, space like this this one this is all made by by earth by by sun um, with different compactness um, we did this with um, Elisaba uh, design school and um, yeah we're trying to work with this removable and flexible elements in public space that someday uh, could become uh, in the urban catalog uh, elements uh, from the city council and um, thank you very much. Um, yeah, here we are to discuss later. 
Thank you, Sylvia. Uh, thank you very much for your um, insight in Barcelona and also uh, to add this um, very important element about, let's say, the spaces around school. What I particularly like, like many other things, is that it's not only about school, but it's also about the neighborhood space at the same time. So uh, I think public space also in different kinds of rhythms and different kinds of use in different kinds of moments of the day, week, etc. And I think it's also a really interesting uh, element on it. And maybe uh, we can do that more in everything. Also, very nice to see that uh, with a little bit of paint and some objects, uh, in a way, you can do really a lot of things. So this isn't completely different than, um, this, let's say, in the 60s, thinking about uh, high infrastructure. So thank you uh, uh, for now. But later on, we are going to ask you <laughs> something. Julia, may I ask you to uh, share uh, your presentation? You start your presentation and share your experience with us. Of course. And first of all, thank you, Daniel, for the invitation. And good evening also to everyone. And I'm sharing my screen. Here I am. And so, uh, yeah, as Daniel said, I, I'm an architect and urban designer, and I'm working as a consultant for the municipality of Milan. And this evening, I would like to share with you uh, two projects that I've been following in the, in the past few years. Uh, there, is, there are called the Piazza Aperte and Strada Aperte projects that literally means open squares and open streets. So they are really based on creating and advocating for uh, livable uh, new public spaces uh, through the tactical urbanism tool. And all these programs uh, comes into a bigger vision of the city of Milan. Uh, that has been regulating uh, in, the, um, in the new uh, territorial government plan uh, that has a vision for the, the city, the, the Milan of the future. And that of course uh, envision all the ideas that uh, we have about the strategy on working on the city. And uh, all the cities all over the world are going into this direction. So from a situation like this, very car-centered, to a, um, a vision that where the public space is really perceived as a common good for everyone. And in order to do that, we have new project priorities that go, like, goes from uh, working for the environment and the resilience of the place and respecting the pedestrian and the bicycle flows, uh, enhancing the active fronts and the small businesses, um, using uh, the, and make the places more attractive for, for everyone. And in this entire uh, vision, also a game changer came, and of course was the, the pandemic that forced everyone to think about uh, what is normality and also about what we really wanted to uh, speed up as a change for our city of the future. And how can we do that? We come from um, a way of acting of pub on public space that is based basically on structural interventions that of course are very um, resistant, they are unreversible and takes uh, a lot of uh, money, millions and a lot of years. But in this way, like especially in, in that moment and now we needed to act fast and we needed to test new solutions. And also as Silvia already said, the tactical intervention tool was really important for that because it was reversible, it was fast, it was cheaper, and we, we could use that to test new solutions for the city and for everyone. And the toolkit that, that you, like, you can use in order to implement this intervention is, first of all, paint. So uh, put color on the ground. And if you work with creative people, you can also have uh, beautiful, uh, uh, asphalt art 
And you can use bollards and curbs in order to shape the new pedestrian areas that you want to create in the existing um, uh, intersections or vehicular places. Then when you have a new uh, pedestrian area, you can activate it through the furniture. So you can put benches, ping pong and game tables, picnic tables, and also potted plants because uh, also, as Silvia said, um, tactical is non-structural intervention, so you can't uh, plant um, on the ground, but you can put uh, the plants in, in vases, for example. And all these tools are really important in realizing the tactical, but the most important one is to create participation with the communities. And all the uh, examples that we will see, uh, we, we managed to realize them through this called collaboration pacts. There are basically uh, an agreement where the municipality and the active citizens uh, state that they really want to take care of a new place and also to activate it because it's important to have a new space but also you need to have seasonal activities and to make it livable all over the year and for everyone. All these uh, elements came together into the Piazza Aperte program. And after two pilot projects, the municipality uh, published this public notice where uh, we were basically asking anyone in the, in the city to propose places in which to create this uh, Piazza Aperte. And we received 65 proposals. <clears throat> we also uh, organized the public event to present these uh, 65 proposals and to start the active uh, participation process to create these new places. This one is an example uh, of a, a place that we, we worked on. And it was like this, just a parking lot in front of a church, but really in the center of the neighborhood. We worked together with the community to implement and to uh, put the, the color on the ground. And then we had the, the Piazza Aperta. And we, we monitored it. Uh, in order to understand if the intervention was successful or not, if the feedback from the community was good, and et cetera. And then we also managed to find the fundings in order to make it permanent. So during in this year, they will uh, realize the final um, square. And we, we have uh, a lot of examples of, the, of that, but the idea behind is to change a place from a, uh, a place where people can't actually go from an, an area where people can take ownership and stay there and be together. And of course, it's really important to work together in the realization of the, of the intervention because People feel that this is really their square and they are doing that even physically. Then it's important to make huge events because uh, you really need to show that something changed and to, that you really have a new place. Then the activation all over the seasons. And from 2018 till now, we managed to um, implement more than 35 interventions. And of course, all of that is, uh, is made to make more livable public space. The second uh, program is really uh, more connected to the COVID pandemic because it's uh, based on the dossier we worked on for the response to the uh, pandemic strategy. And uh, here are some diagrams that um, um, comes from the dossier. The, the idea, the, the most important one was to advocate for sustainable mobility and really work on the streets to make them more inclusive for every type of movement, but also other types of intervention like events outside, 
pedestrianize the, um, the school roads um, or uh, doing more sports outside, doing more tactical interventions and having more space for being outside and being safe and encouraging restaurants to put um, tables and um, in the streets. And this is an example of what happened. Like in, in some streets, we even managed almost to pedestrianize uh, because there were so many uh, land occupation and everyone was eating outside, basically. And the same uh, we did with the school roads in order to uh, let the children play. And the main topic, of course, was the, the mobility. And we really worked in creating a strategy for new itineraries and new bike lanes. And this one you, you see is the pilot project, the Corso Buenos Aires, that was one of the main uh, streets of the city and was very important in advocating the idea of the, um, of the project and the change that we wanted to act. And Basically, it's really simple. You have your street, you just uh, move the parking lot, and then you create new space for cyclists. It's very, very easy. And that was the idea for all the itineraries we create. We also managed to um, introduce some regulatory innovation. <coughs> Sorry. And in the end, we realized 67 new kilometers of bike lanes. And all of these stories really uh, share how tactical urbanism can be a tool for advocacy and systemic change with the aim to create livable public space and streets for everyone. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Julia, for your insight. And, uh, and I think uh, this uh, uh, inspiring uh, toolbox that is really practical to use, I guess um, we have to find a link and put on our website to share it with all, all, all the people in the audience, because we don't have to reinvent the wheel again. Uh, I think we really can learn uh, uh, from you all. Um, so thank you for now. And I would like to ask uh, uh, Mario uh, to share your presentation with us. Mario. I think you have to turn on uh, your microphone. <laughs> Here it is, I think. Yeah, yes, very good, excellent. Yes. Um, great, great pictures, great presentations. Uh, I'm really happy to be here. Thank you, Danielle, for the invitation and uh, the future design of streets. Um, I suspected that uh, our previous presentation would have beautiful pictures of practical cases. So I kind of changed last minute my focus. When, as you can imagine, all of us could speak hours about this. So for 10 minutes, we have to choose like a slice of what we have to say. And I'm going to speak a little bit, a little, something slightly different. Uh, I will speak a little bit more about conceptuals and about the question that a lot of people are asking is, we know exactly now what to do and why it's not happening faster and why politically so difficult. And I think I will tackle uh, issues like language, and, um, and the future, of course, because we are talking about the future of streets. Um, this very um, um, formal uh, cover page has to do with a project that the International Federation of Pedestrians was uh, finished like two or three days ago, last month, which was more. And of course, the European community needs all these logos and stuff, which is good for um, uh, disseminate the project. Um, but anyway, I will not speak much in detail about the project, but I will give you the web page because we have a lot of deliveries. It is a horizontal 2020 project, and there is a lot of deliveries about streets as ecosystems. So uh, it's very, very interesting. And there's a lot of tools how to you use in practice. Uh, so to carry on, um, and uh, for 
just very quickly, because some of you did not even know that existed the International Federation of Pedestrians. We are around 50 NGOs around the world in 40 countries. And uh, you can find us in the major uh, social networks. You can see there uh, the keyword for the search is IF pedestrians. And uh, we are present there and we do a lot of tweeting and Facebooking and all that. So that's all. Uh, I could talk more during the conversation about what we do, but that's not the topic right now. Um, one of the reasons I was um, uh, thinking about changing it and to talk about the power of stories is because in the last three days we've been talking a lot and I've been noticing something about this sad news that you are coming from Ukraine that even if Putin wants the war in practical terms I think the war was lost in terms of stories and memes so you know now that the island that said uh, Russian uh, war uh, ship, fuck you, and things like that. So um, all these stories are very, very important. And the stories and the memes about the war are indeed on the side of the Ukrainians. And I think this is very, very important to understand why and why we need to control the stories and why stories are very important to change the future of streets. I have this image and this is, I don't like to read, but I think I will read the quote from Yuval Noah Harari saying that, we are the only mammal that can cooperate with numbers of strangers because we can invent fictional stories, spread them around and convince millions, millions of others to believe in them. As long as everybody believes in the same fictions and we all obey the same laws and thereby we can cooperate uh, effectively. So basically stories are very, very important for the future of streets because if we have everybody in the same boat, and that's a question that we are going to discuss, I'm sure, during the conversation, is how the previous pre present presenters convince the people, because uh, there is always controversy around these measures. And we can see, for example, the case of Lisbon, that bike lanes and the pop-up bike lanes during COVID were very, very controversial. And a lot of people think that the mayor might have lost the election last year because of that. So that's a good point of discussion that we might want to discuss. One thing that I was always very interested in was about the stories behind technology and the ideologies behind technology. So of course, when we put technology in the streets and we are when we're designing public space, there is a story always that we tell people in symbolic terms. And we can see that from the examples of uh, tactical urbanism that you show that you indeed you are telling a very strong different story that we have been telling in the last 10, 20 years. So it's very, very interesting when we start looking at technology and see what is the paradigm, what is the story behind it. And the other thing that is very interesting is stories and paradigms, the building blocks are words. And then similes, which is basically comparing things. And then metaphors becoming even more powerful because our micro stories. And then the paradigm, which is the macro story. And the macro story is where the things start to change massively and cities start to change massively. So what is a, a simile? I'll just give you an example. When we say walkers are like red blood cells for streets, it's not so powerful, but it's already the beginning of a metaphor that is a micro story that is even more powerful. Walkers are streets, red blood cells. So basically we are incorporating and putting and equating two things that are very different. And this is a story. And the paradigm, of course, the macro story is walkable cities. So basically, if we start telling people uh, macro stories and stories, we probably have much more success than going through um, bullet PowerPoints with bullet points. So Words are very important. And when we speak about words, we speak about language. Let me just analyze a few cases. When, when I was doing my degree in civil engineering, we called walking and cycling non-motorized modes, which is really sad to characterize these modes by what they are not. Uh, so of course, now we all use active modes because it relates to public health and all that. And we, right now, we all know that by now. And the other thing is vulnerable road user. We are only vulnerable cycling and walking because there is 
machines that are little uh, or potentially little running around uh, in excessive speeds uh, with one ton and a half. So sometimes we start, should start speaking about desirable road users because that's what we want. So instead of vulnerable, because if there was no cars in the streets, we, were, we would not be vulnerable. And the other thing that is very interesting is road safety, which was an invention from the, fifth, from the 50s and is a little bit Orwellian. If you know uh, George Orwell from 1984, uh, he has double speak. Um, yeah, so the war is peace and all that that we can see in the last few days, that there is a lot of double speak. So in fact, road safety is a positive twist to something that is actually quite ugly, which is road unsafe. Uh, and safety, that there are. so road, road danger reduction probably is a better way to uh, speak about it. So let's start to change our language and how we speak about this. And we should start questioning how we talk about streets and the future of streets and cities. Uh, one uh, interesting example here is uh, our member, the International Federation of Nations in, in Mexico. And, um, and they have this uh, big um, banner in a, in a piaduct, in a bridge, a pedestrian bridge, saying, this is not the pedestrian, this is not pedestrian, uh, this is not for pedestrians. And basically they do a tactical urbanism in one day and they just roll down uh, um, a zebra crossing and uh, they create immediately a story that is very, very strong to tell and people understand immediately what they mean. The other thing as well, you might know that, for example, uh, jaywalking, we will see here, uh, yeah, it is something that was invented by the car industry in the 1930s. And jay was people from the countryside, was an humiliation to pedestrians. So it was pedestrians that did not know how to walk in the city. So um, language was always very much controlled by the car industry. So even the word accident was introduced uh, by the car industry. As you might know or understand, for example, the airplane industry never speaks about accident, accidents, they speak about crashes. So this is what pedestrians are. And pedestrians are very, very um, different kind of road users because we have different ages, we have different uh, abilities, um, and we have different uh, needs. Yeah? So it's very, very different. If you are in a meeting or if you are doing a campaign, and you, you hear someone saying pedestrians should do this or pedestrians should listen to this, be very suspicious because pedestrians can be a five-year-old or can be a 90-year-old with Alzheimer. It can be someone that is blind, someone in a wheelchair and so on. So what would be the main problem? Uh, sometimes I say that for many decades, we know what is the vac vaccine. The only problem is the political courage to deliver it and to distribute. Speed is probably the main problem. And speed has very, of course, as the problem of uh, safety. So people don't cycle or people don't walk or don't let children go to school because of speed. But I'm going to talk here about a problem that is less talked about, is about the effect of speed in disconnecting people and how to re speed reduces social capital. So, when people are 30 kilometers per hour, they see pedestrians, they see uh, car, um, shop windows, they see new buildings, they can appreciate architecture, but when they are at 50 kilometers per hour, they only see the road. So this is very important. The other thing that a lot of people talk about, and I think, you know, I'm not going to talk much about it, is about air quality and noise. But what I would like to talk about here is how these two elements are very strongly related to social equity. And this is a question of egg and egg and chicken and egg, uh, because usually the main roads and the busy and uh, dirty roads like sewage are in poor neighborhoods. And then the poor uh, and the cheaper uh, housing is on those roads. So this is like a self-fulfilling prophecy that we have to stop. Um, very quickly, because this is like quite, quite obvious for all of us, what are the actual and future needs? Quality of public space. We have seen beautiful examples in the previous presentations, good pavements, sidewalks. Trees are very, very important for climate change. Benches, pedestrians need also to park. Uh, active frontages is very, very important. It's, the street should not be boring. 
because when the, the street is exciting, people tend to walk more. And for example, public transport does not need so many bus stops, for example. So public transport works better if people walk more to the public transport. Safety, we already spoke about it, abundant and safe crosswalkings, this is quite obvious, air quality and noise. Just about the future, of course, there is lit these little animals. Be aware of all this fascination for new technologies. Uh, in Europe, where we have walkable streets, these machines only substitute from three to 8% uh, car trips. Around 60% they substitute walking uh, trips, which are already very, very good for the health and very good for pollution and all that. So let's be aware and they have a place, we can discuss this later, but uh, let's be aware about this fascination because I consider this, and this is in most surveys, this is used by between 85% and 95% by males of high income, uh, young males, okay? Uh, so there is issues of equity here and they use pedestrians and they are, they use uh, sidewalks and they are, as you know, uh, sometimes inundate, inundating like a tsunami in sidewalks. I'm not going to talk much about this, but with, with the pandemic, with the groups like Amazon and deliveries on exploding, uh, they are investing a lot in these little animals. And this is something that we can talk later on, but this is going to be uh, one of the trends of the future. But why put this on sidewalks? This can be excellent device, uh, calming, traffic calming devices on the streets. So, you know, uh, I'm, I see you smiling. You can imagine the cars going tung tung over these things. <laughs> but uh, what we have also to understand is Europe, it's uh, the cities in Europe can go for 30 kilometers per hour as the general speed. And once we are talking about that, this machine should probably go to the street and not to the sidewalks. So let me go back to stories and the importance of stories. I just give you an example, Vision Zero. And why Vision Zero fails, and why sometimes Vision Zero is about zero vision. It's like the lack of vision, okay? Uh, one of the reasons is because we tend to see streets on a one multi, uh, one vision by architects or engineers. And this is one of the main pathologies of streets. I used to say, if we are in a meeting just with architects or in a meeting just with engineers, stop because you're going to do a mistake. So one way to reduce this mistake is to bring in psychologists, uh, sociologists, and very important to bring in public participations with multi-generation like children, elderly, um, because this creates a diversity of solutions and, you know, and we create something that I would call the meta disciplinarity, you know? Uh, we should get away from our disciplines because this is very Descartesian. We only study one thing in my engineering course. I always say I have excellent education that I've taken years to get rid of. I'm about to finish. And this is uh, about one project that's still on more we have been using. This is from Professor Peter Jones and he identified, and this is a story and this is a very interesting story. This is three stages that streets go through how to deal with cars. Stage one, okay, here, is when the car is dominated by cars. So many, many street, uh, cities in Europe are still on phase one, going to stage two, where is the sustainable mobility stage, where we are fighting the car and we are putting bike lanes and we are doing traffic calming. So a lot of uh, cities in Europe are on stage two and very good. Uh, but Stray Street is very, very interesting because it's about the, uh, the city of spaces, of places. And this is what you have been showing in the first two presentations. It's about public space, quality of public space. It's about uh, children playing, playing streets and all that. So basically the car becomes out of the, the equation. We have to deal with it, with the uh, coexistent streets but it's very, very uh, different the way we design with this paradigm in mind. So let me speak about Vision Zero. Vision Zero was created in 20 years ago, more than that. And it was the beginning of stage two. In stage three, 
Um, I would propose we should go beyond vision zero and what that means. Okay, that means, and this is the, my last slide, I think the one before last, uh, vision zero focus on fatalities. Okay, so we have to reduce fatalities to zero. But if our ambition is not, is not to be killed in the streets, that's very, very modest and we should start thinking about it. That's not really a very interesting uh, vision. So maybe we should focus much more on modal shift, much more walking and cycling. Instead of road safety, we should speak about reducing the danger and we should target uh, our, um, the reducing of the danger where the danger is. And we know the danger is in cars. Traffic calming, instead of traffic calming, we should start speaking about liveability. We saw wonderful examples already in the previous presentations, lots of trees, lots of benches, lots of art. Public art is very, very important. And instead of an ethical imperative and vision zero, there's nothing wrong with vision zero itself. Maybe we should speak about a political choice and a political story about children, about smiles, about livability and all that. So instead of having this combat against the car, we should start speaking about the beauty of a city of places. Last slide, sorry. Um, I like to quote saint uh, in this biblical scenario. He says that if you want people, and I'm quoting by memory, if you want to, to make people to build a boat, don't give them a PowerPoint. You didn't say that, of course. Don't give them a PowerPoint with tasks and bullet points. Just take them to the beach and show them the endless beauty of the sea. And then they will want to, to build the boat. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mario. Thank you very much. Maybe you can close your presentation so we can start, uh, let's say, uh, our conversation and discussion uh, uh, here. Um, Obviously, there will be a, a few really in, interesting questions to ask uh, you all of uh, uh, all. But I, I would like to uh, start with you, uh, uh, Maria, because you, you, you maybe because you were the last speaker, but also it's it's about this let's say this ambition. Right? So it's, it's about the stories that we told, we, uh, uh, tell each other what we want and what we want collectively, because that's another thing. So it's not only our discipline, it's not only a political, let's say, vision, but it's also a vision of the community in itself. And um, you quoted uh, you well, of course, about great uh, humanity and, you know, the stories creating collective, working together. Um, but you said also some um, question in a way um, that maybe you can slightly uh, uh, answer even a uh, 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 more concrete way, because you started in a way, why things are not going faster? I'm saying it is my words. As we already know, already how to act and the tools are already available. Why are not things? Why do we, it, it, just to make it concrete, let's take uh, Lisbon for instance, as you mentioned as well, as a moment. What is the momentum of Lisbon or uh, and to act in, let's say, all the things that you talked about, speed, uh, about livability. Uh, it's not about closing the street, but opening the street, uh, so it's in a positive way. Um, can you mention, mention something about that? What you think? Yes, for, for the listeners and the pre previous presenters that don't know what happened in Lisbon, basically there was quite a very uh, strong effort to create uh, pop-up bike lanes during COVID. And this was hugely controversial in the election that was immediately after. Um, and uh, one theory, of course, there was many uh, theories around, there was a surprise. The mayor lost the elections, okay? So that's, that's a setup. And uh, there is a lot of um, uh, post-mortem <laughs> analysis of this. And I think one of the reasons might have been the lack of, not telling a very strong story, an optimistic story about the future. And one thing that is, the, I think what we feel sometimes in some local authorities, and I work a lot with politicians and local authorities, is that they are a little bit afraid to tell the story um, and they prefer to act and then fair complete 
uh, and then people get angry and they get angry with a reason because they were not integrated in their um, in the decision so and even from technicians and people that are very good friends and with our paradigm sometimes they say if you consult too much people they will want cars and public and uh, uh, parking and all that but i can assure you that is not exactly true what we probably need is a lot of more techniques and better techniques to consult people and I can talk a little bit more about that, but it needs to be more, more generational. We need to bring children. We need to, be, to bring people from other uh, ethnical backgrounds, mm -hmm. people that don't use the car every day and all that. That's one mm -hmm. aspect. So, and then, of course, tell them a story, tell mm -hmm. them a positive story about the future, and everybody will like it. And we have a little link here to Barcelona, as uh, we, uh, Sylvia, you mentioned, especially the school areas. Um, how, how did you do, part, do the participation and communication with children? Did you talk with children uh, in your projects and did they act uh, in, your, in the, those projects that you showed? Yeah, well, it, it, um, with the Protect um, School program, uh, we talked mainly with the, the schools themselves, with the direction of the schools and with the families, with the, not with children. Only with children, we've talked um, um, with the design schools in order to implement these playable elements, but not for the design of the of the protecting schools program. But yeah, of course, it's yeah, it's very useful to integrate everyone, as Mario says, not not, uh, not only the male from uh, fifty to seventy that are the ones that are participating in the the standard the standard places. Um, but yeah, we need to integrate all the all the needs. Um, in Barcelona, sixty almost sixty five percent of people are uh, commuting by on on foot by <laughs> walking. So we are we are mainly uh, pedestrians, uh, and that must be clear in the transformation of the public space. And that's what we are trying to do in Barcelona. Only fifteen percent of people are driving a car or a motorbike in the commuting um, daily base. So. When we look at the metropolitan area, it's it's different. It's twenty five percent, but still, it's the minority, not not the majority. So yeah, it's. I think in the end, it's a question of how how do you tell the story, and how the people uh, perceive the, the changes, and I think it's important to do it the, in, during the first years of the elections, not not the last year, because you don't have time to 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 check. What's the real change? No, with the super block in Poblino, where I live, mm -hmm. uh, it was in 2016. It was one year after the election, no, and uh, it was a big mess, a political and mediatic mess, and it was just very uh, stupid uh, changes, no, of directions, and I mean the intervention was very very soft, but then the the impact, the mediatic impact was was so huge. But we had three years afterwards to recover and to show that the change was positive. And people that in the beginning were against the superblock, two years later they told to the mayor, "Oh, we are um, we are using every day the superblock. We come here to play every day with our uh, grandchildren." And then afterwards, everyone is demanding for a superblock, no, at their neighborhood. Mm -hmm. But then you need, no. Yeah. I, I think that the the, the the political timing is very important to implement these actions. In the end, we are just uh, transforming the public space, but it's in the end transforming. No, the, 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 it's the behavior change that mm -hmm. we all know. And even though we are mostly pedestrians, uh, it seems that the the cars, you know, the rights of the cars are something that belong to all of us, yeah. and that we need to organize to to defend them. But when people realize what's the change about, um, they are with it, of course. Mm -hmm. Just to pinpoint this part because it sounds. Um, kind of obvious, and uh, you know, you know, every change, um, the local community has kind of time, needs some time to adapt and to see also a way. Um, at the same time, we are more than ever uh, find participation really an added value in our planning system, and also how to not only uh, make our cities better, but understand, let's say, the local problems very well. Uh, at the same time, it's also a paradox uh, uh, because uh, if they cannot imagine something new, uh, it's, 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 it's kind of different. Julia, uh, 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 did you 
um, uh, um, do you have experience with this paradox or the, 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 is it in, in Milano the, the same thing? You know, it's... Yeah, yeah, we, we have a, a lot of experience with this uh, paradox and that's also the reason why actually the Piazza Aperte program started before with two pilot projects mm -hmm. because um, then people could really see the, the change and the difference from um before having uh, just an intersection with a lot of cars under the uh, their front door of the house and the comparison with having a place when where they could go and children could play and and also in in the realization of the of the different squares of the different public space every time you find people that are against it. Um, of course, there are people that really want the square and, and work with you and implement the, the place. But at the same time, there are uh, skeptical people um, that maybe uh, are, doesn't have the same idea. But the in the practice, um, most of the, I, I would say all of them, but uh, let's say most of the, the intervention um, were really successful in the end for everyone. Uh, also the people that were really, really against them uh, in the end, especially the, um, the owner of uh, bars or commercial places, because they, they have, uh, especially if they are from the other generation, they think that if people doesn't come with the car really in front of the bar, then they um, they won't uh, be successful anymore. And in the end, they realize that is exactly the opposite. Mm -hmm. So now, like, there are some bars, they were really against us. And after, I don't know, one year, when they see us, they, they even offer beers or something <laughs> because they are really happy in the end. But they, some people really need to see the, the change to, to change the mind, their mind, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It, it, it looks like that. that's an that's a really old myth in a way. Yeah, so it's an uh, it's a, uh, 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 let's say the the the, the reserved cars on on, on streets uh, that uh, bring more uh, customs and uh, uh, what you see also in uh, so, uh, a lot of research on that is that. Uh, often there were the owners of the bar using this uh, car places <laughs> so it was not more uh, let's say uh, public but uh, they occupied itself but this is a kind of uh, strange thing uh, to do but that, that, that at the end it's let's say um, is it also let's say uh, talking about the story it's just, is it is it not one story but is it just a continued complexity of a lot of stories together I mean, it's not in one or the other way, like Barcelona shows that it's 2016, even more uh, farther away, uh, if you can uh, uh, put, let's say, the effort, the intervention of the Olympic Games, that also a lot of streets were, uh, um, let's say, modified also for pedestrians and livability, etc. So it's, it's, it's always a long-term uh, changing things. Um, Mario, being, being on this um international platform and, and debate what are let's say um the arguments why things are now uh, need to rapidly change because i think we have also a momentum in a way yes um just to, to answer your question yes of course we need micro stories and we need we need the macro stories and i think that's very important and the micro stories should all go towards the macro story and i think that's uh, that's a good way to, to see things. Uh, and just before answering your question, let me just reinforce what um, Silvia said. Uh, it's very interesting that in Portugal and in a lot of countries, uh, local authorities and politicians, they save money for the year of the election. So they do all the changes of public space in one year and it's, it's terrible because then it's, it's works and works. Uh, shopkeepers hate works and uh, people don't like change immediately so what she said it's very very important i've been saying that to politicians like do the changes in the beginning of your term because people need to experience so it's totally different when you were doing like motorways and more streets and all this uh 
actually, you know, they would, that's the way they saw that like they were doing more and more uh, that would get more votes. But I think now we are in a different, totally different paradigm. They should start doing more livability projects in the beginning of their term and let people experiment. And then we see that after three years, nobody remembers and nobody wants to go back. And I think that's what um, Julia also experienced in, uh, in Milan. Um, and the other thing is about, uh, you know, it's a very, very clever way to use school and children. Who is against children? Who is against protecting children? Uh, that's something that, you know, and especially if you start using children as design, designers, and there is a, a guy, uh, Sanoff, that did a few books on creating a co co-construction public spaces with children. Uh, it's very, very interesting that sometimes adults cannot get to an agreement, but if you bring the children and they start designing and then you make an exhibition, adults start to, you know, their hearts start to melt because they have a place for them, for the adults to have a beer, for them to drink, you know, they think about everybody and then it's much more acceptable. So now your question. I think that, uh, yes, of course, the pandemic, it was obviously that we need uh, the social distance. I don't like this expression. We need social closeness. What we need is physical distance, perhaps. Uh, but this even is questionable because we need also compact cities, but we need broad sidewalks. But of course, the pandemic was a huge uh, wake up call for, for all of us. And of course, climate change, you know, streets, trees, um, and then to know that, you know, now with the war in Ukraine, we will have uh, the price of petrol will explode again. So, and Europe needs to get away from being dependent from um, dictatorships. So we need to have, um, you know, we need to have to cycle more, to walk more, because otherwise we are buying from uh, dictators uh, that have uh, our future in their hands. And that's something that is also a wake up call. So that's a lot of arguments, even where arguments that are, are only like, Apparently, two or three days old. Uh, I think. <laughs> I think a lot of wake up calls and, and, and exactly and, and, and element. And I, I just I'm going to focus on let's say what's what's what really uh, uh, let's say affect in a way the design assignment of of future streets. I think Sylvia, you mentioned a little bit uh, in an. Um, if I understand it uh, well, it's let's say the the effect of trees. Uh, temporality on the on the and and that, that it was a kind of challenging now to put trees in a structural way in this uh, in, in 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 streets. Can you can you uh, explain that a little bit more? Because that is always um, let's say to be it really uh, putting a car out and getting a tree in something uh, uh, sounds wonderful, but probably it's more complex. Yes, it's more complex because yeah, the the greenery, you no, know, the cannot grow properly, you no, know, in, in pots. I mean, it's it's nice to have some green in pots, and it's yeah, it, it changes, you no, know, the, the atmosphere and the the landscape. But in the end, um, yeah, to create a proper greenery, you need to 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 plant, <laughs> to real plant. So you need uh, structural in, interventions. And it's also the tactical interventions with the greening are more cost, um, high cost for the um, for the ma maintenance, because in, in in cities all the all the pouring systems are lately automatic. No, or, or we no when we have these uh, structural in interventions, we try to make it easier, no, for the maintenance, while. When with the tactical interventions, we need the gardeners not to go mm. one by one uh, pouring the the plants, pouring the water, and sometimes we get uh, the help with the communities and especially with the with the schools, no, with the with this program. But in summer, <laughs> when the schools are closed, we always have the same problem. No, all our plants uh, die, and then in September we need to to put them back um okay. so in the end it's it's costly also to yeah the tactical interventions about the greening it's something that we 
we don't know exactly how to do it. I mean, it's we are working with and we try to to make a small interventions. No, in the super block in Sant Antoni, we we put um, we kept some water with the reservoirs from the at the pots, no, at, yeah. at the bottom from the pots. But then we got mosquitoes. So it's, I mean, it's always like, yeah, we are learning learning by doing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's 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 a big challenge. And Daniel, let me talk a little bit about this, the retailers and the, the mm -hmm. car and the cars getting to the shops. Yes. We are talking about this already for 50 years. It's like from the 70s, from the set. So it's like, for me, it's please 50 years showing that when we make a street pedestrian, the, the shops uh, grow and it, everything is better for them. And still we are in Barcelona now with the super block project in, in the city center in, in Chambla. Mm -hmm. We are now, we try, we need to show no, to the political position and to the media and so on that the shops, I mean, we are now on a, a studying no, surveys to other shops to show that the, 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 the impact will be positive. So it's really, really tiring. <laughs> I mean, I'm already working with these issues uh, for 20 years now, mm -hmm. sustainable mobility issues. And it's like, please, I mean, cars, they just enter in our, in our, in our streets since the 60s. I mean, until the 60s, they were not a problem no? in, in, in cities. But from the 60s, they took over all the space. And since the 90s, we are already, or since the 80s, we are trying to, to get rid of them. And it's not possible. I mean, it's like, mm -hmm. come on, they, they took yeah. over all the space in 20 years. And now we are for, yeah, for 50 years uh, trying to, yeah, to give it back. And it's not possible. <laughs> but I think lobbies are also behind here. It's not mm -hmm. only about politicians that, do, that don't do it right at the right moment. It's also about who is behind this, what interests are behind this. And yeah, that's our common fight, mm -hmm. I think. I guess it's a complexity of a lot of uh, issues because um, having a car uh, in some cultures, it gives you also status. Uh, I, my car is bigger than yours, or more expensive, or newer, or whatever. And uh, and that that part of culture is, of course, a part that uh, is slightly uh, changing. It's now I have a better bike, you know. <laughs> uh, sometimes in some uh, uh, subgroups, and, and and perhaps in in, in I have better shoes to walk right? uh, so there, there are always a uh, uh, change but it's true uh, Sylvia it's it's uh, yeah, uh, somebody said uh, it, it took like a decade to adapt uh, the city for the car so the car could enter and since then uh, we are uh, busy to get out the car <laughs> again it doesn't uh, work very uh, very well um, Julia, I don't know if Milano, um, uh, it, it was only in, in the city center itself, or did you had experience more in the outskirts or the periphery of Milano with uh, the project, uh, in the sense of um, having the link with the, the bike, let's say from center to the commuting, let's say areas. Um, and is that different, let's say the, the periphery or let's say the the, the living neighborhoods uh, from the center. Yeah, I was uh, exactly thinking about this aspect. Um, maybe not much more in the comparison between the center and the neighbor, the, the periphery of the city of Milan, but more in from the city of Milan and the, all the cities that are surrounding the city itself, mm -hmm. because. Uh, of course, you can see uh, a big difference from the center and the peripheries, uh, but the reality is that Milan, the city itself, has a like, it's kind of perfect for for bicycle because it's not that big, it's very flat, and if you if you want and if you create space for cycling, it's easy, uh, and we are really working for that. The, the issue for me is uh, the connection between the city of Milan and really the, all the city's surroundings. There are a lot, a lot of people are actually moving by car because the connections are, are not as good as inside the city of Milan. And it's because of the, the distance with, uh, bicycle, with the bicycle is bigger, of course but also because uh, the, um, the connection with public, public transport is not as, as strong as inside the city of Milan. 
So somehow um, there are some people that live all around uh, that are forced to use the car. And I think this is a, a big issue. We, we don't have to think as uh, just one city, but we have to think as more bigger urban areas and everyone should have the right to move in a sustainable way, to go to work, to go also during the night, because in the night it's even uh, more difficult for, for the nightlife, for example. There are a lot of young people that maybe would prefer to not take the car, but they, they have to because they don't have other uh, way to move. So I, I think this is a, one of the biggest challenge we should focus on, um, especially like from my experience in how the, the city of Milan and the surroundings are, um, uh, are made like for now, the, the configuration. Mm. I guess that, that uh, um, let's say that, uh, that uh, touch a lot of subjects in urban planning in a, in a way. Uh, so it's, uh, it's about, let's say, the fragmentation or the monofunctional uh, zoning uh, landscape. Uh, you live there, you work there, you go to school there. And so you need to create a long distance. And because of that, uh, dependent since of all the let's say highway structure that we have and that we invest a lot, but the public transport is less and also the biking, etc. So, but I, I like what you said, they are forced to use the car. So that is, let's say, something that is uh, inter interesting in terms of uh, political agenda in a way, uh, um, uh, in, 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 let's say, Le 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 it's the right to the city uh, uh, element. And we have, of course, the 15 uh, minute uh, city, but it's, it's in a way, it's also having the choice, let's say, to walk and to do your things, uh, 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 let's say, autonomous from a car. Um, and I have to say, from my point of view, <laughs> my experience, I did already the both, and I prefer walking. It gives you less stress a fully uh, day uh, than uh, being uh, uh, at a traffic jam in the beginning, in the morning. Of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> so it is, it is probably, I'm not, but some people like this cocoon of the, of, of yeah. the car, but... Uh, uh, um, um, we, but the, the thing is also how to shift this. Uh, so we are already in this moment. And I guess um, it's also difficult, and I guess it's it's in all the cities. Um, in the city center, a lot of people are working in hotels, in the restaurants, in whatever kind of, uh, 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 let's say, sectors that they work. And they don't live in the, in the city center because they cannot afford it. And they don't have public transport. Uh, uh, so the, they, they, they need a car to commute uh, a lot of things. Can some, I don't, I don't address that to somebody, but it, 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 I can, can somebody say something about it? Because yes, it's I can. Kind of, um, um, uh, 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 yeah, egg chicken problem always, but it's fundamental in a way also to make the big shift. Yes. Can I just uh, comment a little bit uh, what Sylvia said about the shopkeepers? Of, of course, course, we are, are we, we know in, in Milan and in Barcelona, every city that actually uh, the ones that are much more favorable are Diorica, which is um, restaurants and uh, bars because it's of the terraces. Uh, all the others are uh, more tough, tough cooking to, uh, to convince. Uh, one, um, one work that has been done in certain cities that's very interesting is to make them to do a questionnaire Oh, first, ask them how their clients get there to their, uh, to their shopping and then ask them to make the questionnaire themselves and to then to compare. And what happens is very interesting and they actually start seeing that they believe in something that is not true, that they believe that most of their clients come by car and when they do the questionnaires themselves, because it's a question of trust also, they realize the opposite is true. The other thing that is very interesting also is that they might be right in one thing is that uh, car uh, drivers, sometimes they spend more in one go, but walkers and cyclists go there more times and they spend more in the long term. So they have this illusion uh, that is normal and human that uh, car drivers actually are very important for their business, but they don't remember that the person that are their neighbors that walks and cycles actually um, does a lot of shopping during the week 
and actually uh, with the total is more than the car, uh, car shopper. Uh, so uh, the other thing that I would like to comment is about this idea of uh, periphery and suburbs versus the city center. And this is your question. And I think that's mm -hmm. the main thing. This is actually, you know, I, I think that's going to be one of the biggest challenges. It's the suburbs, in fact, as uh, Julia said. And this is uh, basically public transport is probably one of the big answers and probably the main answer. And, but also the active modes, cycling and walking is going to be important and it should be important because the walkability and cyclability around the public transport should be safe, comfortable and exciting. Mm -hmm. um, because for example, uh, I don't know if David Val was already invited was it invited for the street future Sorry? of street? The, David Val from uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was in, the, in the first was, edition. Okay, and he has a very interesting study in the metropolitan area of Lisbon, which I think it's probably true for Milan and Barcelona. Is that ten minutes walk from train stations? The train only covers, uh, I think, about twenty five percent of the population of the old metropolitan uh, area of Lisbon. But if we do ten minutes by bike it covers about 75 or 85% of mm -hmm. the population of the metropolitan area. So if we are investing on public transport, which is very, very expensive, uh, especially trains, we should invest on walkability and bikeability for people to get there. And it's very, very important to understand that if we have livable streets that are exciting to walk, people walk more. And just to give you a statistic that is quite striking, if you make people to walk slightly more than the double, 70%, the area covered is more, three times more. Yeah. So like, you know, this is a, a geographical miracle. So if people walk a little bit more, they have the, the, the area covered by the station is three times more. So like three times more population. And the other thing is of course, to make more compact and more um, density around train stations. But I think this is of course, is going to be the big challenge. And the other thing is social, as you said, Daniel, um, the, the thing is the elite sometimes are living in the center, they are walking and cycling, and the poor sometimes are driving to the, to the city center and in nightmare situation. So <laughs> that's something that we have to address. It's the uh, equity of the, the how urbanism uh, plays on this, because in fact, it depends from city to city. In certain cities, the poor live in the center, but in most European cities, uh, they are taken by gentrification, tourism, and the poor are being expelled to areas that they don't have public transport. And this is a huge challenge. So mobility is not the solution for everything. We need policies in terms of uh, you know, uh, housing, all kinds. Mm -hmm. And just to finish, the other thing, it's very, very important. Sometimes when we do very good public space and walkable spaces, the rents shoot up. And then French, Russians, <laughs> Saudi Arabians start buying the, the houses. So that's something we are very, very, very careful. That does not mean that we should do bad public space on purpose <laughs> to, <laughs> to keep them away. <laughs> but what it means is that only public space policies and only livable streets is not enough. It can be even detrimental for people and we can see in a lot of cities that happen. Mm -hmm. Well, you mentioned a lot of um, issues, um, uh, um, 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 Maria, and definitely it's street space. The future design of streets doesn't depend only on mobility or whatever, only one issue, but there's a complexity of uh, issues. Um, yeah, we should not make a better public space. I uh, agree with that. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> um, with all the dilemma in, in, in itself. But, um, well, time is running up and I just want to have a, a, a last round. And uh, my last question is also always having in mind, let's say, the, the webinar uh, thematic, the future design of streets, and also that we are broadening up, let's say, the spectrum, how to define this design assignment. Uh, so what would you do? Um, just, just the last question for everybody in, in, in some way. What is not essential uh, or what is, let's say, uh, uh, some issues or topics that are important but um, maybe forgotten in the, in the public debate? Um, Julia, I'm going to start with you. <laughs> 
Mm, yeah, probably I would say now, uh, maybe it, it's not forgotten, but uh, cities really need to improve this more and more, and it's the participation. I, I think this is really the key for working in the streets, public space, and also having a, a, a more um, strategic vision on all the levels, because as you said, streets is everything. It's not only mobility. It's public space, public space is city, and uh, it combines all, all the aspects, inclusion uh, and everything. So yeah, I would say that. Okay, thank you, uh, Julia. Sylvia. Yeah, I think the the most challenging thing in Barcelona, at least, or in many Spanish cities, is uh, controlling, checking the, the speeds because we we drive really fast. I mean, many of our signs in cities are just desires. Mm -hmm. It's like you put a thirty and you desire that everyone respects the thirty kilometers per hour. But we are not checking this. We are not controlling this, and um, we've got some check, um, some check speeds in the in, in front of some some schools in Barcelona, and more than fifty percent of cars are exceeding the limits. Mm. And so that's a, a really tough question because it's really, I mean, to to get a, a yeah a livable city or a livable street, we need uh, we need this. We, we need that the speeds are respected. And I think that's that's the our main challenge to in Barcelona at least. Yeah, I wanted to say something else, but now well about yeah we need of course housing policies no to avoid gentrification, but we we need to improve the public space everywhere then not only you know in 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 some parts of the, of the cities, and in Barcelona the the real poor people well, they don't own a car. I mean owning a car in the city is too expensive, so only really a few people. Um, of poor people can afford this. So I think it's not, I mean, of course we've got in uh, industrial areas and we've got uh, working class class people that they need the car because of the, the, the timing, no? they, if they start at six in the morning or they finish at 10. And, but the people that are working in the city, uh, they come mainly by public transportation because also parking policies are expensive. I mean, no one that uh, is, really poor I can afford the car in Barcelona at least mm -hmm. okay thank you and I think it's it's this is a really interesting thing about that you said um in in a way we have the techniques of the speed limits but then uh, let's say something that is the planning and the practice are two things and that I think is uh, very interesting to know also in how to design streets and everything things i will i will tell, almost say uh, uh, to all the people that are involved with smart cities try to innovate something uh, to <laughs> the problem because maybe technology uh, can use it Daniel, in the cars itself sorry, we, don't, we, don't, we don't need to innovate the, the exactly. technology is there exactly. already since since five years ago since yeah. five years ago at least and and the lobby and the lobby yeah. saying to European Union that we shouldn't control. I mean, speed can be controlled automatically by most of the cars that are in the market right now. Yeah. So why don't we do that? I mean, that's yeah, for me a big shame in Europe. Yeah, it's that's a, a big shame. shame. Yes. When I oh, when maybe I hear it's an appeal not only to the industry because we have also a lot of old cars, but it's also especially to decide in this. There are different elements, but okay, this is a discussion about how technology can. Uh, help in, uh, in this. Uh, ma, 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 yeah. Mario. <laughs> I got to the point that when I hear the word smart, I pull the pistol. <laughs> I, I, was, I, I was just saying the smart things that are uh, the element, but I think no, uh, in itself. There um, is, of course, there is a for, for technology. Um, uh, but, uh, 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 streets are high tech uh, spaces in a way already. Of course, of course. There, there is, yeah. electricity. There is a lot of dangers on that, and I think low tech streets. There is a yeah. lot to be said about low tech streets and uh, low tech cities, which has probably is even uh, probably a forgotten thing because I have a problem because all the issues are excellent that were raised mm -hmm. till now, and uh, now I remember one: low tech streets could be a good good issue that is a bit forgotten. Sorry, what? forgotten. Low tech streets. Low tech. <laughs> low tech streets. You know, traditional low tech design. And just let me comment a little bit on what you said. Public uh, participation, very good choice. 
And I think co-construction of spaces should be the future. We should start involving all the generations and people should start designing. And I think that's something that architects have a problem with. They think that they are in the ivory tower sometimes and they are authorship, there is an authorship, but there is something that they have to learn a lot with other people, with different uh, generation, children, elderly and all that. So co-construction is a very, very forgotten issue and I think should be done more in the future. There is, when you do public participation, there is a few things that happen. People, when they arrive, they change their point of view that converges slightly. You never go to the absolute conversions, unfortunately, but that's okay. And the other thing that happens is that even if the final solution does not agree with their point of view, they feel that at least they were listened to. And this is very, very important and that reduces the level of uh, controversy. And the other thing I was going to choose, I was crossing out every time that one of you would choose one. For example, parking is going to be very important. If you, if you want to reduce um, cars in the cities, you have to reduce parking. Parking uh, standards, it is ridiculous, the parking standards. They make housing more expensive because you know if you have to make housing and parking underneath first, spoils completely public, public space because you don't have shops when you have parking because they need a place to breathe and you know there is all these kind of problems architectural problems so um, let's go back to low-tech uh, environments and uh, traditional solutions and let's treat technology with respect and the due uh, limitations of technology <laughs> Thank you, Mario. Um, <laughs> that, 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 that's a, a, a very nice uh, uh, words of all of you, um, Julia, Sylvia, uh, Mario. Very much. Thank you very much for this uh, session to share your ideas, but also to share, let's say, your thoughts, uh, dilemmas, paradoxes, uh, uh, questions. Uh, appeals, uh, 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 let's say, in that sense. And uh, I, I guess it is maybe also a kind of opening in, if we talk about the future design of streets, maybe the future, uh, it's uh, in the back in our, uh, uh, let's say, in, in our past some ways. And it's not only in making new things, but rediscovering old things that can have still today a new kind of value to all of us and that I think it's also something a lesson uh, at the end we start uh, as a child and we grow up and then we get old and all the stages of our life we use these spaces uh, public spaces so thank you very much for your sharing for this session and I would like to also thank very much the audience that stay with us and listen to us uh, for once that uh, uh, watch us after it. Also, thank you very much uh, to um, got to the end and uh, listen to it. We are going to uh, share this um, session, like all the sessions, on our website, the future design of streets, uh, dot au. And of course, I would like to thank Ivo Oliveira, Teresa Correira, and Bruno Moreira, um, and Juan Nuno uh, uh, Cardoso as the organization team that uh, is behind uh, my shoulder somewhere and supports all this idea and organization. Thank you very much. For next session, we will have transforming infrastructures. Um, it's about, let's say, how to redesign existing streets, mega infrastructure or large infrastructures in cities. And we have um, three new guests from Brussels, Praga and Lisbon that will be in let's say one month, uh, the 6th of April. So thank you for watching. Thank you again all and see you around. Thank you. Thank you everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye, -bye. Bye. Bye.